What's going on guys? Today I'm going to teach you that full finger style cover of The Witcher that I just played for you. This song's actually only got two parts that repeat in different spots throughout the song, so it shouldn't actually take you that much to learn. There's a verse and a chorus, and I'm going to walk you through both of these. The song structure for this song is going to be verse, then chorus, then verse, and then two choruses to finish it off. As always, printable tabs, as well as interactive full and slow speed playthroughs are available to Patreon subscribers, and you can check that out by clicking here or a link in the description below. I just want to give a quick shout out to Alex and Kim Conley, our two newest patrons. Thank you sincerely. You're what makes these videos possible. Finally, if you are looking for a complete step-by-step -step guide to fingerstyle guitar, you can check out my fingerstyle program by clicking on the link in the description below this video. All right, with that, let's get started with the first part, which is the verse. All right, so I'm going to play this one with the capo on the 6th fret. If you don't have a capo, then that's fine. You can just play it open, but remember it is going to sound a little different than what I'm playing. But we're going to start first finger on the 2nd fret of the 4th string and play a chord on the bottom 4 strings. To make it sound a little bit nicer, you can arpeggiate the first 4 strings with your fingers to give it a nice, smooth, ringed-out chord kind of feel. Otherwise, you can just strum it. Then you're going to play the open 3rd string, and then go to 4th fret on the 4th string, to 2nd fret, to open. So the first part's going to sound like this. And to make that a little bit nicer, you can pull off from the 2nd fret to the open there. So one note here is this song actually isn't that technically hard to play. So you shouldn't find it that difficult to actually play it, but you're going to find the most challenging part of this one in memorizing it because it's not a ton of repeated patterns and the verse is pretty long and hard to follow. So what I've tried to do here is make some markers in this video of sections to learn section by section. And you're going to want to try and memorize one section before moving on to the next one. The way I memorized this is just going bar by bar, starting with the first bar and memorizing that. And just repeating that until you've got it memorized. And only after that, moving on to the second bar and playing that until I've got it memorized and then try and put the two together. And I just did this throughout the entire song, building it up one bar at a time, memorizing one at a time before moving on to the next one, because it is tricky to memorize. So I'd encourage you to take your time on this one with the memorization portion. Then in the next bar, we're going to take another chord shape, use your first finger and bar the second fret of the fourth and the third string and then also put that third finger on the fourth fret of the fifth string. This one's a little bit tricky, but try it out and I think you should be able to get it. And you're going to do the same kind of thing, either strum or arpeggiate those to make that nice smoother sound. Then from there, you're going to do open third string to second fret, and then a hammer on and a pull off. So open, second, open and then end on the third finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string. So then putting that with the first bar, we've got this so far. Then in a similar kind of pattern, we're going to grab another chord shape. This time, first finger, second fret of the fourth string, second finger, third fret of the fifth string, and then play these four strings. Again, strum or arpeggiate. Then we're going to go to second fret of the third string and play that again. Hammer on to fourth, pull off to open. Then you're going to take your pinky and put it on the 5th fret of the 5th string, and then your 1st finger on the 2nd fret of the 4th string. It's a little bit of a stretch, but try it out. And then you're going to play... So... Then... 
Then back again to that second fret on the third string, and pull off to open, then second fret again, and hammer on to fourth. So that's part's a little bit longer, but altogether that's gonna sound like this. Then adding that with what we've learned so far, the whole thing we've got up to now is this. Then for the next part, we're gonna grab another chord shape and we've got pinky on the fourth fret of the third string, then first finger on the second fret of the fourth string and third finger on the fourth fret of the fifth string. And you're gonna do Then you're going to take that off and play the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th strings all open. Then grab 1st finger, 1st fret of the 4th string, 2nd finger, 2nd fret of the 5th string, and play these three. So that part together. Adding everything we've done so far, it's going to sound like this. Okay, so then this is where the song picks up a little bit and does this kind of alternate thing. So we're going to kind of add that rhythm along with the melody in this next bit here. So we're going to start with this first finger on the second fret of the fourth string, and then alternate between the fourth and the second string twice. Then you're going to add the second finger to the second fret of the third string and play both of those and then pull off just that second finger. So you get the open third string. Then you're gonna grab your third finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string and play it, and then pull off to open. So together that's Then we're going to move to the 4th fret of the 5th string and do another two alternations of the 5th and the 2nd string. Then go to 5th string and open 3rd string. Then put on that 2nd finger on the 3rd string and play the 2nd and 3rd. And throughout this, Keep this third finger on if you can, because it does make it ring out a little bit nicer. If you can't, you can take it off, but you're going to get a better sound if you hold out our bass notes as much as possible. So now we've got... Then play the fifth and open third string again. And do a hammer-on pull-off to that second fret. So that again, keep that 4th fret held if you can, but if you can't, you can take it off and play the hammer-on pull-off just on its own, and then end on the 4th fret of the 4th string. So that bar is a little trickier, but that's going to sound like this. And you want to play this 4th uh, fret on the 4th string, that last note there, with your pinky, because that's going to make it a much better transition into the next bar. So these last two that we just did sound like this.
All right, so continuing on this section, we're going to put our second finger on the third fret of the fifth string and then alternate the fifth and the third string. Then put the first finger on the second fret of the third string, play both, then play the third string again, then put the third finger on that fourth fret of the same string, and play both of them, and then end with the open third string. So, keeping the second finger in the same spot the entire part. Then adding that to what we've already learned from this section, this is what we've got so far. Then you're going to grab the pinky again on that 5th fret of the 5th string, and again that 1st finger on the 2nd fret, and alternate those. Then keep that pinky in its place, and bring the 1st finger up to the 3rd string, and play both of these strings. Then the open 3rd, then back to the 2nd fret, and play both and then move your pinky to the 4th fret of this 3rd string. So that bar sounds like this. Then if you add that to everything, we've got this for the section. Then moving on, we're going to keep that pinky where we just had it, and then add on this shape we've seen before, which is your first finger on the second fret of the fourth string, and third finger on the fourth fret of the fifth string. And we're going to do a slightly different pattern than the last time we did this. It's going to be... So, five, four, five, three. So you play that twice like that. Then in the next part, we're going to take off these fingers and do a similar pattern on the right hand, just move down one string. So now you've got the open strings, and then you're going to put the second finger on the second fret of the third string, and do the same pattern. Except this time it's four, two, four, three. So you're going to play that once, and then do put your first finger on the first fret of the fourth string. So those two parts together. Okay, so that whole part together sounds like this. And good work so far, that's another entire part finished, so now we're going to move on to the last part of the verse. Then continuing on into the last part of the verse, we're going to do again this back and forth rhythm with the 2nd fret on the 4th string. Then put your 2nd finger on the 3rd fret of the 1st string and play the 1st and 4th. Then move down to the 2nd fret. Then play the 1st string and the 4th string with the open first string, and then end that bar with your second finger on the third fret of the second string.
Moving on to the next bar, you're going to take the third finger and bring it down to the fourth fret of the fifth string and play the open first string and the fifth string. Then the second string, fifth, second, Then a little bit of a stretch, but grab the second finger on the third fret of the first string and play the first and the fifth strings. That one's again a little bit of a stretch, so try that one out. And then this part's trickier, so you're going to grab your pinky and play it on the fifth fret of the first string and play the first and second strings. And again, if you can, like this whole song, you want to keep that bass note on so that the bass rhythm rings out. It just gives it a nicer, smoother sound. If you really can't, then you can always take the bass note off, but try it out and see if you can work on that stretch. So then you're gonna go after that, back to the second finger on the third fret of the first string, and play the first and fifth string. And then end this bar with the first finger on the second fret of the first string, and play the first and second strings. So that bar is a little bit trickier. This one's probably going to take you a little bit longer to practice than some of the other ones. So then adding that with the first bar of this section, we've got this. And you can really start to hear the melody in that in those first and second strings there. Then moving on, you're going to take that third finger off and replace it with the second finger on the third fret. Then do the same kind of right hand pattern as the last bar. So first and fifth, second, fifth, second. Then you're going to switch this second finger for your first finger Still on the same fret though, still on that third fret. And then you're gonna stretch over to the fifth fret and play those two strings. Then play that again. And then use this pinky to grab all the way at that seventh fret. And at the same time, again, play this fifth string here. And then end that bar by taking this first finger on the third fret of the first string. So that bar is like this. And all together, the section sounds like this. Then moving on to the last two bars of the verse, we're almost there, we're almost done the verse. You're going to do open fourth string, then open second and first string, then open fourth string, then open second string. Then we're going to go the highest part we're going to go here, which is all the way up to the tenth fret with the pinky, which is actually the 16th fret, except I'm doing this relative to the capo. Uh, if you don't have the cutout of your guitar, this is gonna be a really tough stretch, so you might have to actually leave this note out, but try it and see what you can get. Um, you're gonna play the 10th fret on the first string, and then the sixth fret on the fifth string. Then switch this to the seventh fret with your third finger and then switch this first finger for your second finger, still in the same spot, and then bring the first finger up to the fifth fret of the first string. 
and then to finish this off, add on that third finger on the seventh fret. <clears throat> So then that whole bar, this one's a little bit of a doozy, but so all together you can really hear the melody in this section, but this is going to sound like this. And then that's where the verse ends with this final transition of a bunch of chord strums. So then you're going to end with a second finger on the second fret of the fourth string and strum those four strings four times. And then move the second finger up to the fifth string and put on the first finger on the first fret of the fourth string and strum another four times. So together. And that's how you end the verse. So with that, you can play the entire verse start to finish. So now to finish off the song, we're gonna move into the second section, which is the chorus. And thankfully it's a lot shorter than the verses. So this one shouldn't take too long to get. This is also where we hear the melody really shine through. So this one should be pretty fun to play. So to start off, you're gonna strum a nice soft D minor chord. And in this first chorus, you're gonna play this softly to kind of match the feel of the song at this point. Then you're gonna go first finger on the second fret of the fourth string, open third, then a power chord shape on the third and fourth strings, then switch back to that second on the third string and play the third and fourth strings, then pull off to the open third string. Then you're going to grab this chord shape again, which is going to be first finger on the second fret of the third string and second finger on the third fret of the sixth string, then play the sixth, fourth, and third strings. And if you can arpeggiate them again, it gives it a nicer sound. Just do that with every chord in this song and it'll get a smoother sound than if you strum it. But if that's too hard, then you can just strum it. Then keeping that held, play the second string, then back to the sixth. Then put your third finger on the fourth fret of the third string. Then play open fifth string with the second fret on the third string. Add a nice pull off. Then to the fourth fret here and fourth and fifth strings. Then back to the third. Then with that first bar, then moving on to the next bar, open sixth, fourth string, open sixth, then again that third finger on the fourth for the third and this exact rhythm again that we did in the last bar. So those two bars are pretty much the same, just with those first few notes different. So then that bar is... Got another alternation of the fourth and sixth string. Then put the 
first finger back on and play the chord. Third string, sixth string, second string. So this is kind of a constant sixth string rhythm with alternating your other fingers. together so far. And that's basically the first half of the chorus. Then the second half we're going to start by repeating that first bar of the chorus. We've already learned that part, and then again. So we've already learned all the way up to there, that's just a repeat of the start of the chorus. Then this is where we're going to change it up slightly. Again, with everything in the song, keep this bass note held if you can, and then you're going to play open second, and then put that pinky on the fifth, and play the second string and the sixth string, and then pull off that pinky to the open string again. And then keeping the second finger in place still, put your first finger on the second fret of the third string, and then hammer on to the fourth fret. So starting from the second half of the chorus. And you'll notice there that in that second bar I did keep both of these fingers held for the entire thing. It does make it ring out nicer and makes it a little bit easier positioning. Then to finish off the chorus, we're going to grab a different chord shape, keep this third finger in its place, and move your first finger down to the fifth string, and you're going to do this rhythm. So five, three, two, five, three, two, repeat that four times. Then to finish off the last bar of the chorus, you're going to put your pinky on the 4th fret of the 2nd string, 1st finger on the 1st fret of the 4th string, and then 2nd finger on the 2nd fret of the 5th string, and do the same kind of rhythm. Just with the 5th, 4th, and 2nd strings this time. So now that 2nd half of the chorus sounds like this. end on this first chord of the next verse. So now putting that together with the first half, the entire chorus sounds like this. And those are the only two parts you need to be able to play this entire song. Like I said earlier, the song structure is verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and then another chorus to end the song. Now I keep the second verse the same as the first verse, but the only thing I change in the second and third choruses is some of those chords I strum a little bit louder and fuller to make it just a little bit more powerful as the song does build which makes it a little bit more accurate to the actual song, and I think it sounds nicer because it adds a little bit of a variety to it. 
And what I mean by that is in the first two bars of each half of the chorus, I'm going to strum a little bit louder than I would have in the first chorus. So where before I played this, in the second and third choruses, I like to play this instead. So I was strumming the E minor the same, but just a little bit harder. And then when we switched the second and fourth fret shape here, strumming that too. And you can strum those five strings. Or if you don't hit them exactly, you know, somewhere around it, all these strings will work out all right. But I uh, give it a little bit of strum. And then this chord shape as well. I like to strum, and that just gives it a little bit more volume, a little bit more presence that's really going to give some variety to your playing and make it a little bit more energetic. Besides that, I leave the second and third choruses exactly the same as the first one, uh, and that's optional. You don't have to do it, but I like to add just that little bit of extra energy. And that's about all there is to it. If you can play that, then you can play this entire song.